What's up, Facebook and Instagram? Today is Wednesday. Uh, I don't know the date, so I'm not gonna say it. But uh, I wanted to do my blog, uh, getting ready to go into a meeting here at the City Fam offices. So trying to get it in before uh, that starts because it's probably gonna be a long one. So just wanna kinda keep everybody up on what's happening in my life, in the world of City Fam, why waiting works, um, home, all the other things that are simmering around and brewing around in my mind. Um, but uh, yeah, before I jump into it all, uh, I got some um, news, I guess, um, somewhat of an exciting announcement. So uh, I'm dating someone. Um, <laughs> it's kind of surreal, a little weird, uh, but uh, the girl that I talked about in the last couple of videos, um, we are, uh, we're talking. So, you know, she lives in another state, so it's kind of a long distance relationship, but uh, you know, I haven't dated someone in, gosh, six and a half, almost seven years, I think was the last time I, I really dated anyone. I think I've been on like one or two dates in the last seven, two dates, I guess, in the last seven years. Um, but I haven't dated, so I'm dating. And, um, you know, it's gonna be interesting, I guess. It's funny, like, having to kind of stop working and, you know, send someone a text or check in with somebody because I'm just not used to doing it at all. So, um, if you if you haven't seen some of my videos from before, uh, this was this is the girl that God spoke to me 18 and a half years ago and told me basically that she was my soulmate and um, I stopped dead in my tracks. I broke up with the girl I was dating at the time. I waited for this girl. I thought I reached out to her. I thought that we would. You know, I was gonna tell her to come back and let, we were gonna get married. And uh, I, I didn't even believe in love prior to this. I think I had mentioned that before, but um, clearly God told me, he was very clear. He told me her name and sent me some signs about her. And so, so much so that I did a complete 180. Like I tell people, I'm like, you don't stop having sex for six years unless you're sure, you know? So I was really, really sure that he told me and um, so sure that I didn't even go on one date in six years. And, you know, eventually she got married to, to uh, the guy that she was dating uh, where she lived. And then I, I waited for a couple more years. I didn't even know what I was waiting for at that point. I just didn't even know what to do with myself. I was just trying to be obedient to God and I, I didn't understand it. And that's when I started the backslide. But anyway, so fast forward to 2018, the December of 2018, and now, um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to figure it out. The funny thing is, is like, you know, like, I don't think either of us are in love with each other. You know what I mean? Yet. Um, I am pursuing this because, I mean, she's a pretty girl and we get along, but it's more for me, it's more about, I know I heard it. I know I heard it 18 and a half years ago and I'm, I'm, believing that uh you know god knows best and that my feelings are going to catch up because you know typically in my in the past i've always dated it was always like butterflies and like oh my gosh excitement and initially and then of course it would wane it would go away quickly but that was my flesh too you know and i always I always evaluated women for the wrong reasons because i wasn't abstaining so i was choosing girls simply based off of physical attraction, you know, and maybe a couple of other, you know, very surface level factors. So, you know, with her, um, it's just different. It's a, it's just a completely different, um, thing than I've ever done. So I'll keep you guys posted, um, about it. Um, I'm excited, I guess a little bit, uh, for sure, you know, just, you know, I've waited a long time to, to, have sex and, and I haven't dated. And it, you know, it's hard to maintain those boundaries um, when you're waiting for God to tell you who to date. And, and that's really what I was waiting. I wasn't even necessarily waiting for her the last six years, because at this point I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe the plan changed and, and he's, you know, so he's going to send somebody else along. Um, I wasn't sure, but I did, I did believe that, that he would tell me when I met her, whether it was her or someone else. Um, and, uh, that's what I waited for. So, you know, it's exciting to not be waiting anymore and to be, you know, like, 
I don't know. Like, I feel like at least maybe I can see the finish line now, you know, <laughs> like it might be, you know, however long, but at least I can see a finish line. And, and, and you know, that's, and that's if, you know, her and I work out, which I, I guess I'm believing that we will, you know, I'm believing that, you know, God knows best. And I know, I know 100% that I heard him tell me her specifically her 18 and a half years ago, almost 19 March will be 19. So, um, that's it. That's the new, the new big thing. So, uh, the next big thing. So I, we, today city fam announced the details for our leadership retreat, uh, for, for January 25th to the 27th city fam is doing a, a personal development retreat with our special guest, Stefan Labossier of Stefan Speaks Relationships. So some of y'all know probably who he is. He's written a bunch of books. He's re- wrote the book, God, Where Is My Boaz? The Man God uh, the man God Has For You, How To Get A Woman To Have Sex With You If She's Your Wife, How To Get A Man To Honor You If He's Your Husband, and uh, some other books. But he is a really sharp dude. He's got a huge following. He's got over a million followers on Instagram. He's got over a million fans on Facebook. He's known all over, he travels all over the world, and he's coming to speak at the City Fam Personal Development Conference. So, little secret, uh, I, I got a chance to speak at one of his events just in Baltimore, I guess it was about six months ago now, and I interviewed him for a podcast that Kyle Rigsby and I did, and he was dropping bombs. Like I said, he's a really smart guy, but I told him about Lori. I was like, look, this woman, you know, she's my coach, she changed my life. So he was very intrigued, and he wanted to meet her, so I, Lori came to my, my uh, where I spoke that day, and I introduced them, and uh, Lori is now his coach. So, um, you know, we're just through that relationship, we were able to get him for our leadership retreat. So just, if you guys here, here's the, 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 the nuts and bolts and the skinny on the leadership retreat, it's not going to be a retreat where you come and you sit and you listen to people talk to you. It's going to be one where you work, you have to go you, where you're going to be like digging and, and this is going to help you figure out really clearly what your goals are, what your purpose is and what you're trying to accomplish for 2019. So I've done this before with Lori and I did it with another coach called named Pete Kolash. And it's really how I narrow down on what I wanted you know, what my purpose was uh, here. I see a lot of people that they don't know what they want to do. You know, they're, they're not sure what they're passionate about. And even if they are, sometimes you have like 15 things that you're passionate about. You can't get 15 things done. You have to focus all your time in a few different areas to really make a difference. You have to focus like a laser. So this is going to help you do that. So what I would recommend is if you're watching this and you and you really want to make 2019 your best year, that you come to the retreat. Um, we priced it super affordable. It was $399 for the weekend. It includes your food and your lodging and all your materials. Um, but it's going to be amazing. You know, obviously anything that Lori touches pretty much is amazing. And with Stefan there, it's going to be you know that much better. So um, I would recommend it. You can go to cityfam.com. You can check it out. Uh, the event is up there. You can, if you can't swing the full three ninety nine up front, you can work out uh, even a payment plan with uh, Jenny, and we'll we'll make sure that you're able to attend. But it's going to be great. I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm excited to you know I'm excited to have my face on a flyer with Stefan because dude is like he's a smart guy. So. Um, you know, I actually met with uh, Chris Lockham, he passed for Chris today, and uh, just talking about how to prepare, you know, what I'm going to say, because I'm not, I don't really have anything prepared for speaking engagements per se. Um, I've done a couple and uh, definitely got room for improvement, um, but I'm excited. I'm excited to be, you know, getting outside of my comfort zone and growing and stretching. Um, you know, that's where all the growth happens. I, I, you know, when I wrote the book, I was completely uncomfortable. Um, not, a, not an author, don't view myself as a writer, but I stretched myself and did something that um, I'm really proud of and it's really opening a lot of doors for me already. So um, that's, that's the retreat, check it out, cityfam.com or you can go to uh, SDSC, Stop Dreaming, Start Creating, that's what it stands for, SDSC2019.eventbrite.com and you can reserve your ticket. So uh, check it out, Stop Dreaming, Start Creating, the life you've always wanted or the life you really want. 
Uh, that's the name of the, the, the retreat. And um, yeah, that's it. So next up, Blessing Bags. We just had our Blessing Bags event on Saturday. And we had it here at the City Fam offices. We had it downstairs. And we killed it. We, had, we made 427 bags filled with toiletries, with socks, with hand warmers, and you know all kinds of personal hygiene items that we are giving out to the local homeless population. So that was really cool. We had uh, a ton of kids come out from a soccer team that Wilt Prozaska coaches and brought out, and they were writing like messages on each of the bags, just you know messages of hope. And it was great. We had Christmas music and cookies, and um, it was a really uh, great event. I think we made about we made like 350 bags, maybe 370 last year. So we actually made a little bit more. But shout out to Teresa Scott. You did an amazing job putting it together. Thank you, Morgan Kimmel. You did as well, and the whole service team with City Fam. Um, we're going to be our next our next volunteer event is going to be on MLK. It's Monday, January something. Um, but it's like the third January, the third Monday in January, I believe. But that we've done now three or four years in a row, and we're going to be split up, probably volunteering at about ten different places. Hey, Jennifer Taylor, um, and what's up, Marcy in Ocean City? Um, so we're going to be volunteering about ten different places. So sign up for that, and there'll be kid-friendly uh, events and all that, and we'll we'll do an after party somewhere. But um, you know why we do it is uh, you know it just really accelerates your growth and accelerates you becoming the best version of yourself when you start giving back just like the retreat just like our social events everything we do is all about helping people become the best version of themselves really through the context of community through the context of relationships when you have great relationships and you have a support system it's just um it's possible you know to do to to do the work the hard work on yourself to become the better version of yourself so um that's what we're doing so uh, tonight we are at the e we're at the ETC. This is the City Fam offices behind me, and we have a red, yellow, green meeting. So um, we, we've had a lot of people reach out uh, from all over the country and all over the world about wanting to start City Fam, a City Fam in their uh, you know area of the world. And tonight we are deciding what that looks like because you know it's been a dream that we would have these everywhere, but we really didn't know what that meant. So now we're really having to figure out, okay, what, you know, what can't they do? Like that's a red, they cannot do this. Like you cannot have a renegade at a strip club. <laughs> you cannot have a renegade in a church. I mean, that might be a red, but a yellow would be like, well, you could do this. You don't have to, you know, and, but a, and a green, like you have to do these things in order to be a city fan. So we're deciding what that looks like tonight. We're deciding what the structure is for these new chapters. Like, are they going to be franchises? Are they going to be associations? Is their money coming to us? And then we're giving them money. Is it, you know, coming to them and then they're giving us some type of annual fee. Like we're figuring all this out because, um, we have to, you know, like Houston is like chomping at the bit to start. New York is ready to start. New York, Delaware will be next, possibly Hartford County. I just literally got two people reach out yesterday. I got Austin, Texas inquired and Cincinnati just to me, not through the website. They just sent me an email. So I don't even know what's ones are coming through the email. So like, I think there's like Nairobi, LA, um, I don't even know. I posted something about it the other day. There's like all these people reaching out because, you know, we found our niche, you know, like I've said this for a while in these videos, like there are people like me everywhere. I guarantee it. There can't, I cannot be the only person going through this and we're finding them and how we're finding them mostly is through YouTube. I, I have, I've said, you know, told this before, but I have the number one video in the world right now on waiting to have sex, on no sex before marriage, go to YouTube, look it up, start, type in those terms, wait to have sex, waiting to have sex, no sex before marriage. I'm gonna be the first video that pops up. It's got like 900 and some thousand views. And people are like, hey, I'm trying to wait too. I see value in this. I heard a no fat maybe, or I, you know, there's a lot of spins. I watched a video today where it talked about porn is the new tobacco. Like they're figuring out how toxic porn is right now. They're figuring it out. And it's like the new tobacco. So people are, are, are saying, shit, I didn't realize this stuff was so bad. You know, because they, they make porn normal. They like seem normal. Like everybody does it and it's not harmful. Well, it is. And they're finding out why. So people are like realizing, oh, maybe, you know, being promiscuous isn't helping me 
reach my goals. Maybe it's preventing me from finding love or pre- preventing me from self-actualizing. And, and people are reaching out and they're saying, well, this is a lot harder than I thought. And this is where CityFam comes in because we provide things to do, people to do them with, a support system. Not to say we're the abstinent group, because we're not. But if you are abstinent, if you are waiting, it's a good fit. If you're trying to get sober, it's a good fit. Or if you are sober, it's a good fit. If you just, you know, if you're a drunk or even a drug addict or a sex addict and you're like, man, this is this lifestyle isn't serving me anymore. It's not helping me get to my goals. I want out, but I, I also don't know what to do with myself on the weekends. I still want to have fun. City fam is a great fit. So anyway, people are reaching out from all over and we know that we're just scratching the surface on the amount of people that we're going to help. We still got a lot of work to do in Baltimore, to be honest. Like we're still sloppy in Baltimore and, um, you know, that bothers me because I'm like, how are we going to scale um, if we don't have this figured out, if we don't have the home base figured out? But listen, I believe that God, you know, is in this and it was his idea. And if he is opening the door to other cities, we're going to walk through it. And, um, you know, we're going to keep working as hard as we can on Baltimore and making it right. Um but yeah, I mean, that's all we can really do. So, and I think, you know, honestly, once we figure out how to monetize with these other chapters and we're able to hire some people, really hire some people in Baltimore, and we, we haven't because we don't have the money, um, then we can, we can get Baltimore figured out. It's hard to be really tight. I, or, and maybe I'm making excuses, but I believe it's hard to be tight when you're running an organization that's doing as many things as we are with volunteers. And that's what we're doing because we're not... We're not just doing like one event a month. You know, we're not even just doing two events a month. We're doing events. We're doing life coaching. We're doing, you know, you see everything that we're doing. We're doing a lot of stuff. And it's basically ran on really one employee, which is Jenny. And we have a couple of people that work, you know, part time. So, um, but once we are able to hire, you know, once these other chapters uh, start providing some income, we'll be able to uh, bring on staff. So anyway, I'm, I'm talking a lot. Um, New Year's Eve is coming up. Charm City Countdown, tickets are on sale. I'm not going to talk a lot about it. It's the best party in the city, period. It's at the BWI Hilton, um, and it's going to be awesome. We probably on pace to sell 1,300 tickets, if I had to guess. Um, but it's going to be, it's going to be good. Ciroc is a sponsor. We have a silent disco this year, which is new. There are people that are flying in from all over the country that have found uh, city fam, you know, online. And they're like, man, you guys look awesome. I want to party with you. You look like a good group to have fun with that. Also I can, you know, that'll be safe that I can still not have to worry about making really bad decisions with, you know what I mean? So people are, are coming in. We have several people flying in from all over the country to attend the party. So if, you're looking for something fun to do, come out and hang with us. It was a blast last year. Um, CharmCityCountdown.com. You can use the code CityFam5. It'll save you five bucks. If you can get a group together, you can save up to $10 on a ticket, groups of 10. Uh, and then what else? Thinking about doing a membership site for myself. So um, just really trying to get a plan in place for like what you know, like what's going on? Like what, you know, I, we have this movement, you know, the city fam thing. I got the book that came out. I'm like, at, but at the end of the day, I'm still driving a 1997 Toyota Tercel and I'm living in someone's house in a room because he lets me stay there for free because I don't make any money. And I am committed to not taking anything from city fam ever a pay, um, pay that is, but I do have to figure out like, how, how am I going to survive? Like, I'm grateful that God is using me and I'm making an impact. But I also have to figure out how to make some money because I, you know, let's say I get married, you know, like, how am I going to support a wife? You know, I can't have her move in to my room uh, in this house that I, I live in for free. So uh, and, and even, it, you know, if it wasn't her, let's say at some point I'm going to get married, you know, so I have to figure start figuring all this out. Um, so I'm thinking about a membership site, uh, you know, like the book. And all my content, I believe it, it starts to really convince people that waiting works. You know, that like, okay, wow, this is pretty practical. But now what? Just because it, you're convinced to do it doesn't mean that it's easy. You know what I mean? Like City Fam makes it easier. But I think I might want to do a membership site that provides resources to people 
to help them wait, to help them become a better version of themselves. Um, potentially to help them meet somebody because like there is no app that is built for people that are waiting. Um, so I think that that's a niche. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to, I'm thinking about it, like what that might look like. Um, you know, people pay $19 a month, $29 a month, and they have access to coaches, accountability partners, maybe like some, again, some component where they can meet people. So I'm kind of thinking about it, but I haven't, I haven't landed on it yet. Um, but I, th I do think that that could be, um, a viable op like option for me because it's, it's what my heart is, which is helping people adding value to their life. But it's also a way that I could, um, get paid, you know, which is at some point I need to figure out. So I'm, I'm thinking about that idea. And then, um, lastly, uh, I went, to, we went to New York city, uh, the day before yesterday, a small group of us and just went up and did a little shopping and, um, had a really good time. Got to see, um, all, you know, the Christmas tree and all the lights and stuff. And we actually met up with, uh, met up with, our chapter lead, uh, Jocelyn Santana and Ramona Walcott, they came out and ate with us and we got a chance to hang out with them a little bit. So that was, it was a good trip. It was just a little day trip. Um, I, I look forward to being able to go back to New York for more often for business purposes. Like it'll be great when City Fam New York is, uh, is off and running and I have reasons to go there on the regular because it's just like there's no, no place like New York for real. It, it just feels like the center of the universe. And I know that when City Fam is there and it's thriving, like it's going to just open up all kinds of doors for us because more people are going to learn about who we are, you know, um, once that happens. So, um, you know, keep praying for us if you're, if you're, you know, you're the praying type. Really appreciate it. Uh, I know that what we're doing is not, you know what I mean? Like sometimes I work like it depends on me. Um, but at the end of the day, like I know that this is all, this isn't my idea. You know, this, this is, I, I need to keep put the hours in, but I, and I need to work. I need to work hard because it's important what we're doing. But I also need to realize that at the end of the day, like all God has to do is breathe on this thing. All he's got to do is just, you know what I mean? That's it. Line up the right people, one person, you know, it, it could change everything. So, you know, just pray for us uh, that, you know, he does what he wants to do through us. There's still a lot of parts that I don't have figured out, you know, like, or maybe that I do have figured out and I've tried to do like, to be honest, I was headed back on the bus on Monday night with Melissa and we were talking about city fam. And I just was thinking about all the people that have came through that I don't see anymore. And I was so discouraged because I'm like, man, like, I feel like I failed them. You know what I mean? Like, where are they? How are they doing? You know, they didn't get plugged in and I couldn't get them plugged in. And you know, like our last renegade, to be honest, we had like, I don't know, 30 people there at, at river watch. And that's discouraging because it's been like, you know, five years, you know, of, of pushing with everything I have. And I know I talk about the good things and I am excited about the good things, the new chapters and all that. But at the end of the day, we had 30 people at river watch. I still am a volunteer. I still have never gotten paid from this organization. And not to say I, I don't want anything, but I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't, you know what I mean? There's not, there's no, there's not enough money. I, I would drain, drain, drain the, the organization if, if I, if I tried. And that's like, man, to, to continue to work at that level when the results come in so slow can be discouraging, you know? But then again, last night I was driving home from work and I was like thinking about all the things that all the good things that are happening. And I was completely blown away. It's funny how your emotions can swing like that. You know, like literally like felt like I wanted to quit on Monday night when I was thinking about some things, some failures that we had. And then on Tuesday, I'm like, I can't even believe that this is happening anyway. So that's it. It's me just kind of sharing my heart. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, how you guys could, could help would be pray, come out, attend an event, get involved, join leadership, you know, help us figure it out. You got skill sets and gifts and talents that, um, nobody else has. There's things that you're good at and you're passionate about that 
Nobody else in the organization is as good as you at or as passionate about. Um, but all in all, you know, we are doing better than we've ever done. Um, we're doing more than we've ever done. And a lot of it is because of you guys, like because you have became a member or you have donated something or maybe you volunteered at a Ravens game or maybe you're on a committee right now and you're helping and it's all because of you, you know, like we're, we don't get any money from outside funding and we don't have any grants. We've never gotten a grant. Um, so it all, it all is because of our members and, and people that, you know, watch these videos or see our content. And, um, I don't know. It's cool. It's good. It's, it's good. I'm going to actually, you know what, before I, I sign off, I'm going to take y'all in there and show you what's happening. Uh, because I think people are showing up for our, our meeting and maybe this will be interesting. So let's flip the camera around. Oh yeah. Let's see. Look who it is. Lisa Erdman. <laughs> Oh gosh, I'm on the camera. Yes, yes you're always. on Facebook Live. You've got to be careful. you got to always be on point. I wasn't ready. Are you all ready for your, the red, yellow, green meeting tonight? Red, yellow, green. Yeah. Hopefully green. We are. Yeah, oh. a lot of red, yellow. It's going to be all a right. really good one. And here is Willis grinding away. What's up, Bob? What's going on? Not much, man. What are you up to? What are you working on? I'm still working on that hashtag. Okay. So basically, what we're working on, what Willis is working on, is we are looking at all the hashtags. We're looking at the hashtag doing life together, uh, which is one that we use a lot. And we are commenting on all those people's posts saying, you know, looking good fam, let's build. So this way they, they learn about who we are. They look at our Instagram page and then they go, oh wow, these guys, I want to get plugged in with these guys. And hopefully they reach out and want to start a chapter. So we, we are constantly uh, thinking about things like that. There's Jenna Hornick, the amazing, oh wait, sorry. <laughs> is that a live feed? It is. It's live. Hi, everybody. Yeah. So we are getting ready to start what? Tell everybody about what we're doing. <laughs> what? It's really live? It is live. Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're doing a red, yellow, green meeting where we're having some strategic planning on what the must are for our organizations when they open a chapter and what they can't do and what we recommend that they do awesome there's the amazing linnell she is uh our pro are you our processes director right is that your title sure yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. well, linnell came to us through hub zone, hub zone and has been killing it helping us get our sops in place so that's it oh i think i lost connection on one of these Anyway, so walking back over, but, um, that's it. Um, I think I lost connection on one of these. Sorry guys. Anyway. Okay. Lost you there for a second. Um, but I'm back. So that's it. Uh, process, the meeting's about to start. So I'm going to sign off, but that's all the news that's happening. Um, I'll see you next week. All right. Bye.